Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week. We're actually starting the month off right with some new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, before we get into uh, all the knives properly, I uh, got an announcement to make actually. Obviously, it's the, the retail landscape has been incredibly competitive, especially in the last year uh, with all the, uh, the stuff going on. Uh, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you folks that the holiday shopping season gets earlier and earlier every year. Don't really like it, that's just what we have to do to survive. So on that note, pay attention tomorrow. We're actually launching our Black Friday sale early this year, uh, tomorrow on April 2nd. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. But uh, let's get into the knives now, shall we? First one up is from Prometheus Design Works. This is the PDW STS G10, or just the STS G10. This guy comes in at about 350 bucks, and the design of this actually um, has some pretty solid roots, I would say. The design actually harkens back to and is inspired by an old Bob Loveless fixed blade, the shoot knife or parachute knife uh, that he originally designed and is showing up here in a very cool folder form. Obviously this is a very tactically inspired design, but you can still see kind of that little bit of that Loveless DNA in the shape. Blade is about three and a half inches. We've got M390 steel. It's got a bead blasted finish with some thumb studs for opening and kind of a cool inlay on each of those studs right there in the tip. Looks almost like ivory, uh, although I'm, I'm positive it is not, but it is a, a pretty neat look. But if you wanna know how I'm sure that they're not made out of ivory, it's because they're actually glow in the dark, which is a pretty neat little feature. I don't know how well it's gonna do picking up sunlight and getting charged up if it's stashed in your pocket, but no matter, it's, it's kind of a cool addition anyway. And even if you do never get the benefit of the glow, it's just got a, a cool kind of custom level looking touch in a way. The handles are radius G10 with a few lines milled out here for some extra surface area on the front, as well as on the back, except you've got titanium in this case because this is a frame locking knife. The pocket clip is also milled titanium. It's a right side tip up clip with a hidden screw. There's no uh, screw attachment there from the outside. So it's got a mount from the inside, which is pretty cool. Also got a hidden lanyard attachment point there at the back. And in terms of the grip, nice neutral shape because it's essentially a, a straight slab with some, some radiusing, of course, for comfort. Uh, but you don't have to worry about too much of a prescriptive grip for either larger or smaller hand sizes. It's going to work quite well. And you've got a little bit of finger guard moving forward. Not so much right here at the, uh, the very front of the handle like you might expect, but in this kind of index finger groove, my fingers tend to nestle, or my, my index finger tends to nestle in there quite nicely, especially when pushed up against the kind of slight thumb ramp there at the back. A few other nice blade details. We've got a crown spine, some nice subtle jimping there that's just enough to give you a little bit of extra grip, but it's not, uh, not too aggressive. It's gonna be very easy to use. Good cutting profile on the blade, nice piercing as well, and ball bearings in the pivot. So even though it's not a flipper, it is gonna flick out very easily. All right, next up, we've got a uh, new Benchmade. We're gonna keep the, the tactical looking knife train rolling. We've got the Adamas series. Our first batches of these have landed. Uh, this is the new and improved, newly reintroduced Adamas series. Um, and it's good to see. I, when they kind of discontinued this knife, I was kind of sad about it. Um, but the newer versions are even better. Uh, this large standard version comes in about 238. And the primary upgrade isn't so much visual, but instead of D2, we have a CPM crew wear blade here. So in addition to having some really good edge retention, you've got a heck of a lot more toughness on this new blade than you did on the older D2 blades. So it should perform in some of those kind of rough and tumble hard uses even more, even more capably, I would say. As far as the rest of the tweaks, they've done a few things to kind of slim it down a little bit, but they still make sure that this is a, you know, a solid beefy folder. It's just not gonna weigh you down quite as much or be quite as brick-like as the old one had a reputation for being. The handles there are a little bit slimmer, a little bit more of a, uh, of a contoured-like shape to it, feels even better in the hand than the old ones, and it still has the full steel liners on both sides, but they've skeletonized them out a little bit more strategically than the previous versions so that it's not going to weigh you down while still not giving up enough strength to make you know, a real difference in actual applications. The pocket clip is a folded over design, 
don't quite get deep carried because you have extra handles sticking out there at the back. Uh, like most Benchmades, and, and pretty much all Benchmades that have the axis lock, you've also got a reversibil the reversibility built into the design because the pocket clip can switch around, the lock is ambidextrous, and you've got dual thumb studs here for opening as well. So very easy recommendation to make whether you're right or left-handed. Also an easy recommendation to make if you're large-handed. I've got slightly larger than average hands, plenty of length there on the handle to grab onto. Bigger hands than mine are also still gonna have no problems there. I've got a couple versions to start out with. Uh, there's the manual version, which I have here, and you can get that with this OD, uh, this OD green G10 handle, as well as a tan coating. Not sure whether that's PVD or Cerakote, uh, but there's also a black handle with graphite coating. There's also automatic versions of this knife. And there's actually, there's even a uh, new mini version, which I really like. I actually don't have that here in front of me. Um, slims it down a little bit to about a three and a quarter inch blade, whereas this guy is about 3.8, so approaching four inches. Uh, and those minis start around uh, 212, I wanna say, if I'm remembering correctly. Really cool knife. I will also say that this knife has traditionally come with a belt pouch. That is still the case here, but because of the kind of slimming and, and lightening they've done to it, it is a bit more pocket friendly if you don't want to run that, uh, that belt pouch and you just want to throw this in your pocket day to day. We've also got the return of the fixed blade versions. And this is a, a scaleless handle here, but you get that upgraded crew wear steel in a couple of finishes, uh, the kind of the tan as well as the graphite look here. And these guys come in just over 212. Blade steel here is slightly thicker than the folder. Um, the folder is a little bit over an eighth. This is closer to 5 30 seconds on the, uh, on the fixed blade. Uh, length on that is just over four inches. And one of the things that's different versus on this versus the folder is you have a full length swedge and a deeper swedge than the tip swedge on the folder itself. And that's gonna be nice for applications when you're having to move through materials. You got one less drag point right there. In terms of grip length, it's actually exactly the same as the, uh, the regular sized folder. And if you do want more girth on this, they do include, uh, for one thing, a span of paracord here. If you wanted to wrap this, give yourself a little more girth, you certainly could. Uh, no word right now on any kind of aftermarket scales, however. Now the sheath on this guy is pretty nice too. It's got very positive retention. Clicks right in as you can see. And this strap is kind of interesting too. It's actually elasticized. So you, the point is you wrap it around the finger guard and back over itself and snap it shut. And it almost feels like overkill because the retention on this is very stiff. But if you want a little extra peace of mind, that is there, which is quite nice. They also include a drain hole here at the tip, and they even include some extra hardware if you wanted to add something like a standard size tech lock, which will fit this whole pattern just fine. All right, next up, got another tactical fixed blade, and this one definitely, uh, well, actually, let me make sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is gonna take the, uh, the award for the longest title, longest knife name on this particular video. Uh, coming in about 324, this is the Lotar Combat King Cobra Gen 5 Ghost. It's quite a lot. That is a lot. But yeah, I guess it's descriptive. <laughs> uh, pretty out there knife. Um, very purpose driven here. This is uh, tactical all the way. Uh, blade five and a quarter inches, 3V, fairly thick. I want to say that's about 3 uh, Let me check the spec here. Uh, nope, a little bit over, kind of in between 3 sixteenths and a quarter there. Now, unlike the grip on that PDW at the front, which kind of has a lot of versatility to it, this, uh, when you grab it, does feel very prescriptive. It only really feels good in kind of a hammer grip with your thumb poised there on the jimping, kind of angling it forward a little bit. That's, that's where its home wants to be. If you're wanting to choke up kind of, you know, gorilla grip and push through something, you can certainly do it, but it doesn't quite feel right in the hand. Likewise, reverse grips, not too bad, but it, there's something about it doesn't quite feel uh, right to my hands. I'm not a tactical like, tactical guy though. Um, I'm sure there's there's good reasons for exactly the way this grip is, uh, because like all of Lotar's stuff, it is very purpose driven and it is by all accounts very good at what it does. You've certainly got, like I said, a lot of grip for traction, very aggressive finger guard there, so you're not likely to slip forward at all. And even for a smaller knife like this, there's some slight you know, choppy ability to it. Not, not so much. Um, in fact, you might be hitting, uh, in terms of the sweet spot right out there near the, the transition on the tip, 
Now in terms of performance, this definitely feels ready to strike, ready to point forward. Uh, the tip sits at a very natural spot for me. You've got this nice aggressive tip and that recurve there for some extra cutting capability, especially on the, uh, on the pullback, on the, on the reverse cut. Definitely going to have a lot of power in this knife. Sheaf on this guy is Kydex and they do everything right as far as I'm concerned. The retention is good. You've got a drain hole here at the bottom. You've got an included tech lock. In fact, I think this is actually a, uh, a name brand tech lock. May or may, or may not be, uh, but it works the same way. And in terms of attachment, you've got both rivets and slots. So it's going to work with pretty much any attachment hardware out there. All right, next up, we've got some new Chavez. Uh, actually, this first one is a restock. Uh, we've got new Liberation 229s in, both the, uh, the G10 version, which is about 320, and the full titanium coming in at 350. Blade is about 3 and 5 eighths, M390, very finely ground. Got a kind of a classic-y, classic -y, that's a word. It is now. Classic-y looking blade shape to it uh, with a flat grind and a very fine edge, very thin, sharp edge. These are, of course, made by Riot. Uh, for Chavez. Got a titanium finish on the handle, which means it's going to wear quite nicely, especially when carried in your pocket. And as far as carrying it, you've got that iconic skull pocket clip there on the back. Grip on them feels nice. And you guys, uh, if you've seen me talk about Chavez's before, you've probably heard me make these uh, two points, but I'll make them again anyway. I like how close the pivot is out towards the front of the handle. And I even love more than that, the very fine cut line between the lock bar and the rest of the handle. There's a lot of precision there, not a wide gap, just gives you that feeling of precision and solidity. The whole thing, it's definitely gives you that same feeling as well. Next up, we've got the second generation of the Chubb, which is the Chavez Handy Utility Blade. Uh, these guys come in at 185 for essentially a titanium holder for this, uh, this standard utility blade, which I guess that's a reverse Tonto blade. Yeah. Probably. Um, so there you go. Uh, we were actually, someone was in the comments the other day asking what, what blade shape that would be, whether it was a Warncliffe or not. It's a reverse Tonto. That's what we're going to go with. Now you do have that same iconic skull pocket clip on the back and the slider here on the front gives you a couple of different positions for that utility blade. Really, that's that's all there is to it. It's a fairly simple design, but it feels solid. It has a little bit of weight to it. It doesn't feel like it's going to float away on you. And it's got enough kind of thickness and girth to it where you can really get a solid hold on it, even though it is short. It only gives about three fingers for me, but it still feels pretty secure. We've also got uh, a trio of new bolt action pens from Chavez as well. He's coming at 185 and uh, they're all the same except for the body itself. There's a smooth version, a, uh, a hole punched version, as well as this spiralized version I have here, which I think is the, uh, to my eye at least, the best looking of the bunch. Again, nice iconic skull design there on the clip, titanium body, and a nice bolt action as well. Now I actually really like the way they treated the, uh, the thumb stud on the bolt action here. Uh, it's kind of domed and smooth. So especially for you know day-to-day -day use, there's not going to be any aggressive ridges or sharp points that are going to get on your nerves as you use it. It's just going to be nice and smooth operating. And of course, being a bolt action, if this is clipped to your uh, one of your pockets, you're not going to have to worry uh, about uh, the tip or the uh, the knock on the back getting depressed and uh, getting ink inside your uh, your pocket since you've got that bolt on the side. As far as writing experience, these come with a Schmidt Easy Flow 9000 cartridge, which means you're going to have compatibility with a wide range of Parker style cartridges out there. So these are good cartridges, but if they're not your thing, plenty of options to swap out. All right, next up, we've got some uh, a new design from Best Tech. This is the designed by Jason Clark. It's the Spanish Tip Razor Flipper. Uh, two versions uh, starting at, uh, or sorry, more than two versions. Uh, but we've got versions starting at about 248, and that includes this natural micarta version, as well as some uh, some G10 colored options, which have some uh, some pretty cool looks to them. But you've also got uh, my more favorite versions, uh, a little bit more expensive, coming in 264. There's a shredded uh, carbon fiber version, as well as this, which is a black and orange carbon fiber, which it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on here, but it's got this nice sheen to it, this nice kind of inner luminance. It's a, uh, a cross grain cut. As you can see, you can see all the layers on, you know, on the face of it, as opposed to coming in from the side. 
but it, it's really cool. It has almost a, it's almost a cross between a nice wood and amber and some other things. I really dig it. And it has a nice feel in the hand too, especially with this slightly matte texture. You don't feel the individual ridges from these layers, but I don't know, something very nice. I, I don't know how to describe it. You guys are gonna have to pick one up for yourself uh, to, to check it out. Blade steel here, M390, about three, uh, 3.6 inches or so, full flat grind. Uh, you can use it uh, as just your everyday utility. Uh, but for friends like Thomas over here shooting the video, he tends to think all of these things make great cheese knives. Well, they do. Well, debatable. Um, but you could use it for cheese if you want. Um, but if, of course, it's got just a nice bit of style to it as well, especially with this really cool handle material. Rest of that handle is titanium, and you've got titanium bolsters as well. Liner lock on this guy, no frame lock, so you get that cool pattern or that cool material, no matter which one you choose, on the back side as well. Pocket clip, sculpted titanium, right side tip up, and we've got a ball bearing based flipper here, very nicely executed. Good amount of grip on the uh, standard handle. You've got some contouring to it. You can get a real solid hold. In terms of the, uh, the finger choil up here, you're not gonna be able to pull off uh, choking up on that if you have larger fingers like myself, but for some smaller fingered folks out there, it might work just fine. All right, next up, we've got some new bucks, uh, the Paradigm series, available in uh, two different finishes, and each of these finishes can be had in either an automatic version or an assisted opening version. Now, we had some new uh, bucks earlier in this year that were uh, imported. These, however, are, uh, are all American made, which is quite nice. Uh, the autos come in at about 200 bucks, blade length just over three inches, and we've got S35 VN steel. Good, nice, good upgrade from some of their standard materials. The handles are black G10, but of course you've also got the, uh, the alternate color variant also available in the automatic version. Uh, and the auto version has a gold pivot and a gold backspacer, which you don't see on the, uh, the assisted version of this. We've got a deep carry pocket clip mounted from the tail, which is reversible. And the cool thing about this auto is the locking and release mechanism. Uh, it's not a push button, but you've got essentially this bolster design here. As you can see on the front side, the bolster rotates up and that's how the lock and the release is operated. So as I go to close, I just push the bolster back and I can rotate the blade into the closed position. Nice and easy, it gets to be very intuitive once you've done it a couple of times, and you can keep your fingers out of the blade, the blade path as well. But then when you're ready to go ahead and fire the blade, it's the same thing. You essentially pull down on the bolster, and you can see here from the back, you've got a pin here that essentially behaves the same way a lot of plunge locks do. It's just actuated by this rotating bolster. So pull that up, blade flies right out quite nicely. Now, as far as the assisted version, it operates the, uh, the same way with this sliding bolster. Although in this case, you can see it actually stays up on its own uh, when you're using it. And that works both as the unlocking mechanism as well as a, uh, a secondary safety when it's closed. So I'll close it up here. You can see, just push that bolster back and then rotate the blade closed real easy. One-handed keeps your hand out of the way. And then you, uh, you lock the bolster back into place. And in that position, that blade is not coming out. Now in terms of that, uh, that closing action, it's a lot easier to close than some assisted openers out there can be. It doesn't feel like you're fighting it too much. That's gonna be very easy. But when you go to fire it open, slide the bolster back up so the safety is released, pull the flipper. And if you're doing it uh, right, if you kind of practice it a few times, you'll do it without even realizing it. When you pull that flipper tab back, your, fingers, your finger is gonna push the bolster back into the locked position. So it's one less thing you have to worry about. As far as the color on this one, of course, you got the black or sorry, brown G10 and kind of a goldish or kind of almost a patinaed brass look on the bolster itself, which is quite nice. Still got S35 VN. You've got the flipper tab on this version as well, which is going to give you a little bit more protection than the automatic version in, in terms of forward slippage. But in terms of the blade shape, it's kind of interesting. Just a, a simple drop point, but you've got a nice acute tip on this guy, uh, whereas a lot of bucks, you know, kind of due to their hunting knife heritage, tend to have a lot of belly going on. This guy's a little bit more precise in its tip work there. It's gonna work really well for day-to-day -day stuff, of course, and because of the angle of it especially, it's gonna feel real nice getting in there, opening up boxes, which, let's be honest, most of us, is probably what we're doing with our knives most of the time anyway. 
We also got one more USA made buck today, and that's the new Budgie Compact. These guys come in about 80 bucks, uh, and it is a smaller knife, but at least for that price, you are getting some upgraded materials here, uh, namely a two inch blade of S35 VN. Again, nice jump up from the, uh, the 420 HCs that a lot of their base models tend to carry. Now in terms of the handle, you've got a Jade G10, a translucent green on this guy, with a black Cerakoted uh, backspacer here that doubles as a nice wide bail on the end. Uh, you've also got a black G10 version. That one comes with a red bail, which is quite nice. That bail actually is going to make this really nice. Uh, maybe not so much, or, or maybe the primary intention wasn't necessarily a lanyard, although you certainly absolutely could and get a little more grip on this. I've got kind of three fingers myself, but if I had a, a lanyard there, I'd be able to wrap my pinky around it. But because of that width, it's going to be really nice on a keychain if you or a larger key ring if you were the kind of guy uh, or gal that wanted a, a slightly more substantial keychain knife on you. It's going to be real easy to do with this guy. Lockup, we've got a tumbled stainless steel frame lock on the back. Not too thick. Um, this is not a, 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 hip, a hyper light knife, but it's not super heavy either. Uh, just over two ounces. The lockup is quite solid and then it's easy to uh, unlock when you need. There's some nice kind of milled holes on the underside of the lock bar here. Gives your finger something to grab onto. Folds up nice and neat. You've got a nice wide or a nice wide cutout in the blade itself. Very easy, even on a larger hand, to open this smaller blade. Of course, if you'd rather not carry this on your uh, your key ring, you do have a nice pocket clip here. Uh, in a way, it's, it's slightly wider. You could kind of think about this as sort of a money clip knife, um, maybe a little bit anyway. But in any case, it's pretty cool, and we're really excited to see some more USA-made bucks this year. All right, next up, we've got a, uh, a new version of the Boker Cub from Lucas Burnley. And in a way, this is kind of my favorite one because this is kind of the, the workhorse version uh, that we haven't seen yet so far. Most of the ones they've released uh, have had fancier handles, including some really, really nice looking green curly birch. Don't get me wrong, I like those. But this guy right here, uh, the price has been brought down and the materials are, are just more workhorse, for lack of a better word. Uh, price just under 90 bucks. We've got a D2 steel blade, three and three quarters of an inch, and micarta handles with, you still do get a little bit of fanciness with some nice thin red liners. And those are set off real nicely by these copper pins on the handle itself. This is definitely gonna be a version that you're not gonna be afraid to get dirty. You've got the benefits of that micarta. It's got a bit of a matte texture to it. Uh, and especially when that you have that kind of texture, it's gonna react real nicely when things are grimy or sweaty or start to get wet a little bit. You're gonna have a lot of solid traction and grip on this knife, even though it is a fairly thin handle overall. Blade length is a great everyday utility shape. Decent hunting profile if you like the type of knife that has more of a, a long sweep of belly as opposed to a more concentrated belly out there near the tip. Flat grind on this guy, decent thickness, bit over an eighth of an inch. Man, it's, it's just ready to work. This is gonna be a fantastic EDC knife. In terms of carry, it does come with a ambidextrous or I should say reversible leather sheath. Really nicely constructed and this will fit in no matter which side of the body it's on. But even better for EDC, maybe get a custom Kydex sheath made for this guy and it's gonna carry very unobtrusively, especially if you do something like an inside the waistband carry. I'm, uh, I'm really digging that as a possibility for this knife. I may wind up doing something like that myself um, if I'm so inclined. We'll see, we'll see. But I really dig it. Just, it's a versatile shape. You can get some little bit of tactically stuff if you want, but to me, this is all about EDC utility. All right, next up is something I, uh, I forgot to show a few weeks ago. Uh, in fact, last week we were talking about the single blade versions of the Boker Atlas, uh, and I mentioned the version that had a pair of scissors on it and that it wasn't new anymore, but then I realized I never actually showed this to you guys. So I'm gonna show it to you now. Uh, this is the Atlas multi-tool as opposed to just the plain old Atlas slip joint because you get, like I said, that nice pair of scissors there. But these guys come in just under 30 bucks, Blade length under three inches. You've got a 12C27 drop point blade with a hollow grind, kind of a high polished finish, almost mirror like, but this is gonna be a really nice cutter day to day. It's just a blade, plain and simple. There's something nice about that. On top of that, you've also got that pair of scissors. And while I haven't used these or tested it out personally, they feel really good. You've got a strong back spring on it. The action feels good. It feels like the, the, uh, the join up between the two sides is very nice. I like that a lot. Now, like the standard Atlas, 
they still managed to keep this a very slim knife because the handles are steel and folded over. So it's an integral knife essentially, but thanks to that fold, very thin. You don't have a whole lot of extra hardware to worry about. It's going to be really nice, really easy to carry, especially with this slick finish uh, on this guy. Very easy to use. Nice pocket clip there on the right side. Lots of love. Now, one more thing on the, uh, the subject of things I forgot to show you when they were new. Uh, black Canvas Micarta handle upgrades for the full-size Becker knives, direct from K-Bar. These come in about 45 bucks and they feel really nice. I've, I haven't used these, but I've upgraded a few of my larger Beckers especially. I think they really, to me at least, benefit from having the Micarta handles uh, and their standard versions have always felt very good. So you just have a, a new color option. Now the Becker handles, of course, have always had a great contour to them. They feel very comfortable for most folks, including myself. And now with the Micarta, it has a slightly more premium feel. And again, like we were talking about earlier with that Boker, if these happen to get wet, they're gonna feel uh, even grippier while they're wet as well. So that's really nice, and that's why I like to put them on my uh, my larger back. Pretty much anything from the BK9 and up, I prefer to have these uh, these Micarta versions for myself personally. All right, few more things here to uh, as we come towards the end. New version of the Kershaw Outright Flipper. This is uh, one of their budget assisted knives. Comes in about thirty bucks. Blade here is an eight CR stainless. Uh, length just about three inches and handles. You've got G10 over stainless steel on the front and a stainless steel frame lock on the back with a tip down pocket clip right there. In terms of the action, it is a speed safe assisted opening flipper. A little more resistance there on the close as you probably saw from the uh, from the picture when you compare it to uh, something like that buck assisted opener from earlier. But like that buck and like speed safe knives going back for year for years, you do have nice, excellent and repeatable action. The blade's gonna be really nice for some longer slices. You've got a PVD coating there and a bit of a hollow grind. And that swedge, again, removes that uh, that point of drag we were talking about earlier. And it fits nice in the hand and it feels ready to kind of move. Really nice for those longer slices. Now, if you like this, but you're not uh, sold on the all black version, uh, the older version still is still available with a, uh, a very distinctive look, a blue PVD coating uh, instead of black. So check that one out too. We'll link to both down below. All right, next up, we've got a new CRKT tool roll here. Uh, this is the Joe Wu Hexbit Driver Kit. Comes in about 45 bucks and has a nice leather case. But you fold that open and you've got here, in addition to a nice brass driver, you've got 13 bits as well. 12 of them here embedded into the side. Nice little slots. You can slide them in and out. And one installed on the driver itself. The driver is, feels really precisely turned and you've got a ball bearing there on the top. So when you're palming that and working on some small things like your knife pivots or anything, you can twist that real easily without it uh, kind of getting caught up on the skin of your palm. There is magnetic retention for those bits, so it's not likely to fall out quite so easily. And it just is a really nice looking package. It stores in itself very neatly, folds right up. Uh, in terms of the finish on this leather itself, it's kind of a glossy finish right now. Um, I tend to prefer maybe a little more ragged or a little more natural finish going on, but this is certainly gonna wear in quite nicely. All right, next up, it's ax time. Uh, we've got three new axes from Apoc Survival Tools, uh, including a larger version or a larger ax as well as a double bit ax. But I pulled this particular one, which is the Hunter Hatchet. Uh, which is about a 12 inch overall length coming in at about 64 bucks. Now these things are essentially put together very simply, very ruggedly. Uh, the materials are nice for a, a large impact or any kind of impact tool like this. It's a 9260 carbon steel, which is essentially kind of a, a spinoff of 1060 that makes it, uh, the changes they make to it make it even tougher than that steel, which is gonna be very appreciated. And then the convex edge on it itself very highly refined, nice and sharp. This is definitely ready to bite into whatever you're, uh, you're chopping in front of you. I also appreciate uh, one nice little detail here on the back. They have essentially flared out the pole a little bit so that you get a little bit more surface area there if you happen to want to use this for any kind of hammering tasks. And on any kind of, kind of slab constructed hatchets like these where you're simply bolting on scales to the steel itself, that's something you usually lose out on. But because of that flare, it's not a lot, but it is when you, you know, compare it to just the standard thickness, it is a fairly, uh, fairly 
big improvement there. So even though, like I said, it's, it's kind of small on its own, definitely a nice touch and I like that attention to detail there. Handles themselves, black G10, bolt on, nothing, uh, nothing too complicated there. Uh, but the sheaths on these guys, I think are pretty cool. It's got two leather straps, as you can see there, and it kind of slides down into place. Let's see if I can do it well there while showing you a good angle on the camera. Kind of slides down into itself. You've got that slot. So it has a very, uh, very nice, works very nicely. <laughs> and then the, uh, the snaps fold over right there, and they do give you some small belt loops there on the back, but this is probably more likely to be just kind of thrown in a pack um, as opposed to actually carried that way, um, especially for folks who like a, a nice, thick, heavy leather belt, probably not gonna fit through there. And last but not least, know them, you love them. We've got a new half breed ax, double bladed. This is the compact battle ax. And as a Nest Mug fan, I'm always a big fan of a, uh, a small double bit hatchet. Uh, this is probably not gonna satisfy my, uh, my Nest Mucky outdoors needs because it's gonna be kind of hard to, to choke up there and, and use either of those heads in a uh, kind of a bushcrafty fashion but I am who I am, I, I like it anyway. Uh, this is significantly more expensive uh, than that APOC. These come in at 445. Now what you're getting for that, in addition to just kind of more of everything, uh, you're also getting some really, really excellent fit and finish uh, and a lot more options on the sheath as well, which I'll show you in a second. Blade here is D2, kind of uh, massive in a way in terms of the thickness there, uh, about uh, 0.31 inches, lots of strength there nice abrupt grind with a pretty darn sharp edge as well. Handles are G10, a couple different colors, and like some of their other versions, you do have multiple swells on the handle, so you've got a couple of different spots that you can choke up on for some of that cross-section work. And I guess right back here, that would kind of give me my, uh, my Nest Muck vibes if I really wanted to. Maybe I need a tactical Nest Muck in my collection to, I think you do. <laughs> to, to compliment this. Someone, someone out there, get on it. Maybe Joe Flowers. That'd be the guy to do Yeah, it. yeah. Joe, if you're watching this, have Condor make a tactical Nest Muck for us. Or maybe that's a Topps knife. I don't know. It might be. Either way, you get a knife out of it. Well, I'd probably have to buy it anyway. Yeah. Anyway, Joe Flowers, get on that. We'd really appreciate it. Um, like you're not going to buy a knife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Let me show you the sheath now, now that Thomas has done sassing me. Got it right here. Um, they, they do a really good job with... with kind of going above and beyond on their sheath systems. Uh, in addition to having multiple attachment options, as you can see here, we've got that uh, a plate on the back with two dots straps. We've also got a tech lock style attachment in the, uh, in the box. You can swap that out real easily. And you've got threaded posts on either side of the sheath as well. So you've got, you can mount this just about anywhere. You've also got a single retention strap here with a pull the dot snap on it. So it only comes off in the, uh, the one correct direction. If you have this mounted to the side of something and you're walking through and you snag it on something, really unlikely it's going to come undone. Just overall, like I said, above and beyond. Like this, this has a ton of stuff baked in. There's a lot of money sunk into the sheath option here. So like I said, that's part of what you're paying for with one of these half breed axes, whether it's this one or any of the other nice ones we carry. All right, well, that's all we've got time to show you this week. Thanks for sticking around. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and to get your hands on any of these. As always, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to the Knife Center. While you're over there, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.